morning, everybody. Good Monday morning to you, and welcome to a brand new week. One of the few remaining weeks before the presidential election. A week of consequence. A week that we can never get back. This week, may God help us to do all that we can for his kingdom. May God help us to do all that we can for our fellow man. May God help us to love as we have been loved and give as we have received. To live all in, full out for the glory of God. That is God's will. Welcome to Pray for America. Pray for America 714. 14 minutes of prayer at 7 a.m. for America, for our president, for the presidential election, and all manner of related things that might pop into my head as the 14 minutes roll on. <clears throat> Let's pray. God, you are so kind. You are so gracious and so good. You are so merciful and so forgiving, so loving, so generous. Lord, you bestow grace on the undeserving, and you call the unrighteous righteous. Lord, it is an amazing paradox how you can take our sin upon yourself and give us in return your righteousness. How you suffered and died so that we could live. How you became last so that we could become first. It is amazing, Lord. Dear God, I pray for our president. We pray for our president this morning. We pray that you will strengthen him, that you will protect him, that you will give him humility and direction. And most of all, dear Lord, that he would be completely surrendered, a child of yours. May he be surrendered to you, Lord, not to China, not to any other country, but to you. Lord, we know that we have a presidential debate coming up this week, and we pray, Lord, that, that you would strengthen and that America would see the policies of the, the two candidates and, and pick the one that best reflects what you would have, who you would have serve as President of the United States. Clearly, I know who I'm picking. Unless something really drastic or weird changes, I'm unashamedly supporting our president, President Donald J. Trump. Father, I just thank you that you've given us the ministry of reconciliation, as it says in your word, reconciling reconciling people back to God. What a, what a cool job. We're ambassadors for Christ, it says. I just so dig that, Lord. Whether we're a housewife or, um, do they even use that phrase anymore? <laughs> Whether you've got a big government job or not, we are ambassadors. We, we carry the label, son and daughter of the Most High God. That's some serious privilege. That's some serious importance in this world. Help us, God, to do that. Help us to uh, discharge the role of ambassador to the kingdom of God with great joy and great fervency and great love. Lord, we pray for 
not just the presidential election, but mayor mayoral elections? Um, would you put in mayors in our land that are compassionate toward the poor, that are um, determined not to allow uh, anyone to take advantage of anyone else based on anything, their race, their gender, anything. Put mayors in that, that love their fellow man, but also that believe in the rule of law. We've got to, we've got to stand for what is right and, and recognize that you appoint the government for our care. Lord, I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. We pray that you would bring peace to our land from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea, from north to south, and all through America. Lord, may the peace that passes understanding reign in our land. Lord, I pray, we pray for revival. Dear God, let your spirit sweep across the plain. I remember last week, it was like I saw a picture of you pouring out a bucket of your favor, your blessing on America. Would you continue, Lord, with the wind of your spirit? Let it sweep across America, reviving the soul, refreshing your people. Lord, thank you that you love us so much. Help us to know your will and give us the strength and courage to do it, like putting on this hat this morning. Just so I just felt nudged. I looked up there and saw the hat, and I just felt nudged. Lord, you want me to put it on? It seemed like you did, and so I did. Simple. Simple little obediences to those little nudges that come into our hearts can have the biggest of consequences. Allow us to obey you no matter what, Lord. Thank you, God. You're so kind. And Lord, we pray for those in our midst that are fighting illness. Diane, good morning. It's good to see you. We pray that God will heal you completely from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That he will absolutely eradicate every bit of the enemy of cancer from your body. And we pray the same for my friend Joel, for my sister Janice, and for Karen who underwent a test. Haven't heard the results of that. Lord, we we love you. And for all who see this later that might be struggling with illness, no matter what it is, Lord, heal them, we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, our new Supreme Court nominee, Amy Comey Barrett. I think I said that right. Father, would you uh, protect her, protect her heart, her spirit? And if, Lord, if it is your will, may she be confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States. In all things, Lord, we say, your will be done. Lord, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, you remember it, I'm sure. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you prayed, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But then you said, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, I suspect you already knew the Father's will. You probably said that for our benefit, knowing that there would be times that we are called to suffer called to give when we don't want to and that we would have the strength to say your will be done Lord thank you Diane for that comment 
Okay, and just amen to that. Right there it is. Hallelujah. Father, thank you so much. Lord, give us uh, voices and courage that we can be a part of the national dialogue right now surrounding the election so that we can convince our friends to vote in such a way that the greatest chance that little baby, unborn, preborn baby lives will be saved. Lord, if, if we could all witness a late-term abortion, I mean, if the, if the veil was lifted, if the, the, the hidden covering of the womb were not there, and, and we saw the heinousness of that atrocity. Dear God, I think that we would march in the streets, that your church would come out of her four walls, and we would just demand that it end. Lord, I pray that you would cause your people to do whatever you want us to do. I'm not calling I'm not calling us to war. I don't know what your strategy is, Lord. But would you give us a strategy to protect the lives of America's most innocent? God help us. And God forgive us. Lord, you said in 2 Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Well, Lord, I repent of my own lackadaisical attitude toward these murders. Lord, allow me to be freshly blown away in a negative sense at abortion. I remember how aghast I was the first time I heard that that actually happened. Lord, let our sensitivities return that your church will take her stand in the culture and insist on protecting these babies. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for every single person within the sound of my voice right now. Every person that tunes in to pray for America. Bless them, Father, for doing that. Bless them, Lord, and allow them to sense your joy and your, your, your pleasure over people turning to you. That's all you've really ever asked us to, to cry out to you for help, to surrender our lives to you, and to trust you instead of trusting in idols, instead of trusting in armies, to put our trust in you. And Lord, from cover to cover in the word of God, you have poured out so much favor and blessing on those who would trust you. So we trust you, Lord. We trust you. Make that trust practical. Help it work out in our daily lives. Thank you, God. You're so kind. And lastly, Lord God, I pray again that you will bless America, that you will pour out your spirit. Father, help us to experience the wind of revival. And may godly men and women be elected all throughout the country, governors, congressmen, senators, everyone. You're welcome, Diane. It's my privilege. Diane said thank you for leading us in prayer for our country. It is a joy, you guys. That's some good coffee. Well, guys, don't forget to tune in at 5 p.m. for the John Morgan Show. Frivolity, humor, well, that's kind of the same thing, and uh, passion. 
It's going to be a great day. Appreciate you. God bless you. Stay well out there. Don't forget to share this. We, we'd love to build this audience in the last four weeks or so before the election so that more and more people are praying. Did any of you guys see uh, the event called The Return? There was a huge uh, gathering, a two-day gathering in Washington, D.C. On the, on the mall, you know, in front of the uh, Capitol building and the White House and all that. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people, all based around Second Chronicles 714. Two days of fasting, prayer, repenting. It was marvelous. There was, there was no, um, you know, it wasn't about who was speaking. That there wasn't names and, and, ooh, let's honor this one and that one. No, it was, it was just all people humbling themselves, crying out to God. And uh, thousands and thousands watching, as was I, online. Well, I say let's continue in that vein and watch God move for the good of America and the Israel and the homeland of Israel. All right. Peace out, brothers and sisters. <laughs>